welcome you to Ridgeway. We are in Hardin County for the Kenton Moose Family Center 428 warm up. We are with the Ridgemont Golden Gophers and joining me first is head coach Mike Eversole in his third year and things feel different your third year after the first two or kind of the same as far as the coaching, the preparation, the kids, that type of thing. Uh, the preparation, the coaching, the kids are all about the same. You know, you lose your seniors, but uh, the rest of the guys have been around for uh, four or five years coming up through junior high and that. So uh, we're just ready to get going. Numbers about usual for Ridgemont for the high school program, right where you're, you're used to? Uh, we're down about three from last year, um, up probably 10 from previous years. So uh, we're still feeling good about the numbers. Wish we had a few more, but but for a school our size, we're, we're about maxed out. Last year we came out, August the 1st, you were one of the few schools in our area that was practicing that first day. And there were high hopes. And then your son, um, end of the preseason basically goes down, tears his, uh, what was it, ACL? ACL. And, and hopes, you know, all of a sudden, what do we do? Our quarterback's down, he's, he's a sophomore that's a good athlete. So now he's back, he's healthy. Expectations, hopes back up again? Um, our expectations are definitely, uh, they're high like they were last year. Yeah. Um, this year, I think our expectations are a little higher. Um, you know, Ridgemont has consistently played uh, freshmen, sophomores, and a lot of juniors. Mm -hmm. um, this year we start uh, nine seniors. Wow. Um, we start three juniors. And, uh, you know, the sophomores are, are experienced sophomores. So uh, we feel that uh, this year we're, uh, we're playing, you know, upperclassmen, mm -hmm. um, experienced guys instead of playing freshmen with no experience and uh, taking our lumps. So our, our expectations are high. The experience obviously is big, but just from a strength perspective, these kids are 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds. You see the physicality of them, don't you? Oh, yeah, you, you see it in the weight room. You know, you go in there and the, the sophomores, the freshmen, you know they're they're struggling, mm -hmm. and then the uh, the seniors and some of the juniors come in and and they're putting weights on the bar, and they, it, it makes you cringe sometimes. But <laughs> you know, I guess that's the nature nature of the weight room with the the older kids. So that should be a definite plus for us this year. A couple scrimmages coming up at Arcadia and then Ridgedale as well. What do you hope to get out of those? Um, really, with uh, Arcadia, um, that's where uh, our quarterback went down last year, so he's he's got some. Uh, I don't know, some Go. mental issues with playing Go. there again, but uh, I told Go. him he's going to have to suck it up and do it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Arcadia will be a good, it's a try with Holgate, so it'll be a good uh, just get out and uh, work out some kinks, see where Go. we're at. Um, the uh, Ridgedale scrimmage is here. It's a Thursday night. I guess they play a Thursday night game, so we agreed to do a Thursday night scrimmage here um, to help them prep for that. <clears throat> that one we should be uh, pretty much in game form. Okay. Um, we should be ready to go, so... Hopefully uh, things go well. Take us through the senior class. You talked about nine guys starting. You know what characterizes this group uh, as far as strength, as far as character. You know what would you say when you think about this senior class? Um, this senior class uh, at, at Ridgemont. You know a lot of the athletes they play every sport. Right. Um, for the most part, this senior class is a football only class. Oh go. wow. Uh, they don't go. they don't run track. Go. They don't play go. basketball. Go. Go. Uh, two of go. them play baseball. Um, so they're, they're football only. They're also the leaders on our powerlifting team this year, which uh, plays second in regionals and sixth in the state. Hmm. Um, so they are, they are physically strong. They're big kids. And uh, football is their life. Yeah. You know, so with, with them, they're just a, they're a good group. They're a good group of leaders. Um, they're not real loud and obnoxious. They lead by example. Hmm. And uh, it's something that uh, Ridgemont for probably 20 years has been lacking. Powerlifting, we see it at Kenton, you know, we see it here. Just what does that do for the football program? Obviously, you think of strength, but just overall, how does that help you in the winter? Um, the big thing is, is it helps keep the guys in the weight room. Okay. Um, you know, when they're playing all the different sports all year round, it, it, it becomes a battle between me and the other coaches <laughs> of getting time with them. The guys that are on the powerlifting team, you know, they go through uh, February and they're in there lifting heavy. You know, it's a lot of strength, just pure raw strength that they're they're doing. And then uh, it also gets them excited because they, they see their changes in their bodies and their physiques and they see their weights go up. Hmm. And then it, it transfers over to when we come into actual football lifting and get out of the power lifting. So it's a big plus for us. And it also keeps uh, the kids with us. And we yeah. keep an eye on them a little bit. Looking at the first half of your schedule, uh, 
at Van Lu. That's always a, a nice rivalry game. You beat them last year, 46-13. Then three new teams on the schedule, at least from last year, Mount Gilead, Harden Northern, and then week five, Belmont come here. Right. How does that change uh, the way you prepare and kind of change the shape of your schedule? Um, not really. Okay. You know, Van Lu is always our first game out. Um, you know, the first three years, it didn't matter what we did, we couldn't beat them. We went up 19 to nothing at halftime. Yep and gave it away uh, the last two years. We, uh, we have beat them. Um, we expect to beat them again this year. Um, we're going there, it's a Friday night game this year. Um, we got uh, Mount Gilead coming in uh, week two and then Harden Northern. We scrimmaged Harden Northern last year. Right. Um, they're coming into our conference next year. So they're our, uh, our week three game here, which is great. Um, and Belmont, we, we don't know a lot about. They were a, a fill-in game for Miller Sport from last year. so. We'll see how we do against them. Don't know a lot about them. Uh, the Raymond's Catholics coach said that's uh, the Dayton team that we wanted to play. So okay. that's what we decided to do. Okay. And then the, speaking of Lehman, the NWCC schedule ramps up there. It's kind of the, the league solidified a little bit here. Mm -hmm. What do you expect out of the Northwest Central Conference this year? Um, I, ex I expect it to be tough. Yeah. You know, uh, obviously Lehman, um, they got a lot of guys coming back. They're going to be good. Um, Fort Loramie is just going to reload. Yeah. Um, Perry will probably be pretty strong again. Um, Waynesfield's always tough, USV. Um, I think, uh, you know, like last year, Lormie and, uh, and Lehman Catholic, are they're the guys to beat. Yeah. You know, if, if you want to do something, you got to beat them. So, uh, but other than that, I think it'll be a good, a good, strong conference this year across the board. All right, Northwest Central Conference play a big season coming up. Waynesfield Goshen in week seven, Lehman in week eight, and Fort Lormie in week six for this team. When we return, more from the Ridgemont Gophers on this Kenton Moose Family Center 428 preview. Welcome back to the warm up. This one brought to you by Kenton Moose Family Center 428. We are joined now by three Ridgemont seniors directly to my right is Ryan Johnson. He plays on the offensive and defensive line. In the center is Trevor Sparks, linebacker, running back, and on the end, Justice McGue, wide receiver, safety. Guys, you came over here panning. I'm hoping that can help you get a little breather. It looks like it was a tough practice. Ryan, how has the summer and early in the preseason been going for you so far? Um, it's been pr going pretty good, uh, lifting all the time. Um, right now, we're practicing as hard as we can. It's probably been the toughest eight practices that we've had so far throughout all my high school career. And so it's just, it's great to see that we're going towards tough football. Trevor, third season with Coach Eversall. Are things starting to become a little easier knowing his ways a little bit? Yeah, I mean, usually coming back, um, junior high, major stuff like that, I could never remember like plays. There would always be new, 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 and starting to catch on finally. and. Uh, understanding stuff a little bit easier. And Justin, what about for you, the summer, what, how, how productive were you during the summer with the guys? Were you able to get some lifting sessions in and, and do seven on sevens? Yeah, we uh, we lifted quite a bit and then uh, we practiced on Sundays by ourselves, and we did go to a couple seven on sevens, so I feel it was pretty productive. Team camaraderie is pretty high right now then? Yeah. Ryan, let's talk about the line a little. First of all, do you prefer to play on the offensive side of the ball or the defensive? Which is more fun for you? Uh, offensive, that's what I've been playing all three years. Our old coach, Coach West, he never would let me in at defensive line just because I was like our only center. So uh, it's so you're fun. stuck there. <laughs> yeah, but it's just one of those things that's grown on me. And uh, defensive line starting to though too. So that's good. Is there some younger guys on the line that you're you find you're mentoring a little? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I, I'm help mentoring like everyone, you know. But uh, there's a lot of new freshmen that I'm trying to mentor a lot and uh, a lot of sophomores too. So. Trevor, are you finding that in the linebacker position that you're also having to do some leading or also in the backfield on the offensive side? Yeah, um, well, offensive side is my first year, really. So defensive, yeah, I help the younger guys out a little bit. Justice, how important is conditioning knowing that you guys have a, a smaller class, 29 players on the team? and you're gonna be going deep into games. How important is it to make sure you guys can, can play to that fourth quarter all the way through? Oh, it's very important. If uh, we get our conditioning in now, we can have more guys going both ways, make our team more stout, trying to keep the seniors on the field, the better juniors, some even freshmen, so. 
And final question, you guys looking forward to having Corey come back and, and see his, his turn back from injury? Is that going to be a big lift for this team, you think? Yeah, I think it's going to be definitely a big lift. That's right. So Corey Eversall, the junior starting quarterback, returning from injury here. You heard from three Ridgemont Golden Gophers seniors. We'll hear from three more when we come back on the warm-up presented by Kenton Goat Moose Family Center 428. Third down of the warm-up, this edition brought to you by Kenton Moose Family Center 428. We've got three more Golden Gophers here with us. Junior Corey Eversall, quarterback and safety. Cade McKinley in the middle, who plays on the line. And also at linebacker and on the end there is Cameron Smith, running back and linebacker. So, Corey, we'll start with you. I see the brace on the knee. How are you feeling and uh, how exciting is it to get back out here? I feel back to 100%, if not better, and I haven't played in over a year, so it feels really good to get back out here. And Kate, are you enjoying seeing Corey out here, knowing that must have been pretty sad last year when he goes down in the scrimmage and is lost for the season? Yeah, it was pretty like uh, worrisome when he went out because we didn't really have a backup quarterback yet. But now he's back, I think we're going to do a whole lot better this year. And Cameron, starting off with Van Lu week one, what are you looking forward to in that first game? Um. Well, I'm definitely hoping that Corey will get back in his groove and all that stuff and hopefully get a lot of yards, too, on that and hopefully come out with a W. Big rivalry game. You looking forward to that game against Van Lu? Definitely. This is my will be my second year playing, third year on the team, and we've played on first game every year, so it's something to look forward to every year. What improvements have you seen so far in the short time in camp? Well, I think we're working a whole lot better this year as a team. We're trying a lot harder in practice. We're not screwing, as much, screwing off as much as we did last year. Discipline is a big part and will help you lead to that success. What area do you think the team needs to improve most upon heading into those scrimmages and leading up to week one? Uh, well, most of us aren't in shape right now, so definitely want to get most of us up into shape. And once we're smiling over there. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's good for us, though. So, yeah, once we all get in shape, we'll be able to ready to go. Where do you think you guys fit into the NWCC this season? It's a pretty competitive league, and we know there's some powerhouse teams at the top. You think you'll be competitive? I think if we stay healthy and we keep working hard, we can be right up at the top with everybody else. Cade, what would you say your favorite part of training camp is? Is it being around the guys and getting back into the groove, or is it is it, is it the exercise? What do, you, what do you like most about it? Just getting to see all my friends after summer, vacation, and all that. Better yeah, that must, that must be a lot of fun. Cameron, is there a specific game you're looking to besides the opener, maybe a, a specific conference foe that you consider a rival? USV. USV. Yeah. And why is that? Well, they've just been a rival for a really long time and just hope to beat them this year because last year we came up three yards short and we're going to use that as fire this year. So it should be a good one on week nine when Ridgemont travels to Upper Scioto Valley. That'll do it on this edition of the warm-up. I'd like to thank our guests and our sponsor, Kent Moose Family Center 428. For Andy Lynch, I'm Matt Finkel. We'll see you next time on WOSN.